Hello everyone, we are a group of Cal Poly students here to present you with a video on the Cylinder Lab that took place on October 25th, 2018 in California Polytech University, San Luis Obispo. Fluids in motion are called fluid flow. Both gases and liquids are considered fluids. There are several aspects that define the fluid flow and even reflect the properties of the fluid itself. Fluid can be steady or unsteady. Steady means that the fluid has a constant velocity at any point in the fluid, while unsteady means the velocity differs in between points. Viscosity represents the degree of resistance to shear stress. It can also be said as the thickness of the fluid. Rotational and irrotational flow. Rotational flow has no vorticity, which means that locally the flow does not spin. Course, compressible and incompressible flow. The flow is considered compressible if the density of the fluid changes over time or position. Incompressible flow has a constant density throughout. At low velocity, the fluid has laminar flow, while at high flow rates, the fluid becomes turbulent. A flow with a Reynolds number less than 2,000 is considered laminar, and more than 4,000 is considered turbulent. Flow between these two regions is considered to be transitional. In reality, when a fluid moves past an object, the molecules close to the surface create what's known as a boundary layer. In a boundary layer, molecules in contact with the surface become static and slow the motion of the molecules directly above them. Each subsequent layer of molecules above the surface layer maintains this trend until the flow resumes the original free stream speed. When the flow eventually separates from the body, the area between the detached flow and the surface form what's known as vortices. These vortices are formed as the fast moving air of the separated flow is in contact with the slow moving air in the wake. The shear layer that forms draws the air of the wake backwards along the outside and pulls it back towards the body in the center. Our objectives for this lab were to visualize and inspect the airflow around a cylinder at different Reynolds numbers, or in this case different velocities. We tested at 5, 15, and 30 meters per second. We also want to determine the pressure drag coefficient around the cylinder, and evaluate the effects of Reynolds number and surface roughness by utilizing a trip strip for the flow on the cylinder, as well as contemplating sources of error and uncertainty. In this diagram shown, a cylinder spanning the width of the Cal Poly Low Speed Wind Tunnel was installed at the front of the test section. The door near the exhaust section of the wind tunnel was opened to allow proper ventilation, and the ceiling vents by the inlet were also opened. The cylinder had a diameter of roughly 0.1143 meters. This is small enough that it does not cause a significant blockage effect. The cylinder had 24 pressure ports drilled into it, and each of the pressure ports was connected to a scanny valve by routing the tubes internally. Fan speed is controlled by adjusting a variable frequency drive from the control room. We've also included a diagram of both the port and trip strip location on the cylinder in relation to airflow. To begin our experiment, we initially obtained the ambient conditions for temperature, density, and pressure within the lab room. We ran the first test at zero velocity to obtain the static pressure for the ports spanning the wind tunnel. By varying the wind tunnel speed using 5, 15, and 30 meter per second values, we obtained both visual and empirical data at each pressure port surrounding the cylinder. Each test was ran a total four times to help account for the variability of the experiment. We then ran a second test at zero velocity to obtain any changes to the ports that may have occurred during our first set, set of tests. Our next tax introduced 3M grip tape placed just before the separation points on the upper and lower surface to trip the boundary layer. We observed these points to be around plus minus 75 degrees away from the stagnation point. Varying the wind tunnel speed using 5, 15 and 30 meter per second values from before, we obtained data for each pressure port with the trip strip and repeated this process four times. We concluded our time in lab by gathering ambient conditions after the set of tests. In total, we ran 26 tests, 8 for each of the specified velocities and 2 as zero velocity. Some tests were ran with a smoke machine to provide a reference for flow visualization of air traveling over the cylinder. This process was then amplified using either a food light or laser to visualize and isolate more of the streak lines. Smoke doesn't have a significant impact on how the air behaves, so the tests were still considered to be accurate. Drag is calculated by integrating the pressure at a given point on the cylinder around the whole surface. The pressure is multiplied by a cosine to get the magnitude of the force in the horizontal direction. The negative sign indicates that the drag force is in the opposite direction of the apparent motion of the cylinder. 
Dynamic pressure can be calculated as the difference between stagnation and static pressures, or as one half the density times the velocity squared. Coefficient of drag is calculated as the drag force divided by the dynamic pressure times the characteristic length, in our case, the diameter. Coefficient of pressure is defined as the total pressure force divided by the dynamic pressure. The Reynolds number is equal to the density of the fluid times the velocity of the fluid and the characteristic length of the body, all divided by the viscosity of the fluid. Standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the square of the value of each point minus the average of the values, all divided by the number of values minus 1. Coefficient of pressure of an inviscid flow around a cylinder can be calculated as 1 minus 4 times the sine squared of the data. Our results for this lab included observing the coefficients of pressure and the coefficients of drag for each trial, as well as calculating the standard deviation of each trial. The coefficient of pressure distribution around the cylinder is far from the idealized and viscid case. The presence of viscous forces create a boundary layer around the object. This region is removing energy from the flow in the form of vortices and causes separation to occur at around plus or minus 1.309 radians from the stagnation point on both the top and bottom of the cylinder. We place the trip strips around the same location, which are indicated by the red vertical lines. Due to the trip strips placement, however, our analysis after the lab indicated they contributed very little to changing the airflow. The air had already become separated by the time it passed over the trip strips and as a result did very little to each port. This is shown through the similarity between the no trip versus trip observations in each graph. Our 30 meters per second graph exhibited the largest values for the coefficient of pressure. This is because the pressure differential across the cylinder is at its highest for this experiment. The forces exerted on the cylinder directed towards the airflow is the largest due to the increasing dynamic pressure. The largest pressure readings are located at the stagnation point, while the lowest occur where the flow separates. The coefficient of pressure is relatively constant in the separated region. Tripping the boundary layer earlier using grip tape should cause the flow to stay attached longer to the cylinder. By introducing a rough surface, we are allowing the flow near the surface to retain some of its energy. From interpreting the coefficient of pressure data, when the flow velocity was lower, it allowed enough time for the disturbance caused by the strip to shift along the cylinder and affect the pressure pulse. As the velocity reached 30 meters per second, however, there was so much air being pushed past the cylinder that there was not enough time for the trip flow to affect the pulse. We know the coefficient of drag is inversely proportional to fluid velocity and directly proportional to drag. Even though we increased the velocity from 5 to 15 meter per second, the drag force was much greater than the velocity that it increased the coefficient of drag. As we increase the speed more, we can see from the graph that the coefficient of drag starts to decrease. Our findings suggest that it it was not efficient to increase the velocity to unless it was more than 15 meter per second. The standard deviation reported in the plots above was calculated at each port for the 100 data points collected for each trial. Then the standard deviation of each of the four trials was averaged for each port and plotted against port number. The ports are numbered 1 through 26 corresponding to the ports on the Scania valve. The stagnation point occurs near port 14 which corresponds to port 12 on the cylinder. This point had the lowest standard deviation because it experienced a nearly constant high pressure. The ports at the rear of the cylinder have large standard deviations at higher speed due to the flapping turbulence we observed. At low speeds, the flow stayed attached and laminar, while at higher speeds, the flow detached and became turbulent. This causes a fluctuating region of high and low pressure and large variations in the recorded pressure. If our data sampling frequency was equal to the flapping frequency, we would have observed a low standard deviation at all points. We found that lower wind tunnel speeds create a smoother, more laminar flow. This can be associated with a lower Reynolds number, which is the ratio of the flow momentum versus its viscosity. As the velocity decreases, the viscosity of the fluid contributes more to directing the fluid motion. At the limit of a low Reynolds number on the order between 0 and 1, we can see idealized flow in the form of creeping flow where little to no separation will occur. The Reynolds numbers observed in this experiment are on the scale of around 10 to the 5th, however, so the airflow will tend to become turbulent around the body of the object, primarily after the separation point where we witness vortex shedding occurring in a cyclical pattern. The coefficient of drag decreased when we introduced a trip strip at relatively low Reynolds numbers because the flow stays attached to the body for longer.
We think that at these speeds the flow is allowed the chance to influence the ports and overall reduce the coefficient of drag. At a higher Reynolds number, however, too much air is passing through the test section and doesn't allow enough time for the tripped layer to influence the pressure ports. The surface roughness contributed very little to changing our coefficient of pressure as a result of the flow having already separated. While this was not our intention, it does confirm that the notion that placing a trip strip too far away from the stagnation point will have little to no effect on cylinder performance. Okay. The second port on the cylinder was damaged and reporting incorrect data from the wind tunnel. As a result, when we calculate the coefficient of pressure around the cylinder, we observed a spike in the data around this point. Since it, since it is consistent in every trial, this error can be considered to be systematic and has to do with the pressure port itself. After consulting the TA, in order to get a more accurate representation, we can either rerun the test using an unblocked port or take an average pressure difference between ports 1 and 3 on the cylinder to obtain more accurate values. Another potential source of error comes from the wind tunnel restricting airflow through a confined volume. The air flowing past the cylinder experiences the pressure that the walls exert on the outer parts of the flow and thus cannot expand to the same degree that it might if we observed the airflow in an open environment. The trip strips were placed past the point of flow separation, so they had barely any effect on the flow. They were placed approximately 2 inches to the side of the pressure ports, so the flow going over the pressure ports would not be significantly impacted even if they were placed before the separation point. 